Hey, what's up you guys? It is Brad from Brick Lover Brad here today with another episode of Ask Brick. My Q&A show here across all my social media channels where you guys ask me questions down in the comments below about literally anything Lego related, Lego, non-Lego, whatever that might be. Anything you want to know, leave it in the comments below and I will answer it up here on video. Today we're getting a little bit spicy and we're starting off by talking about the Lego Ambassador Network, why adults shouldn't be allowed to do the mini model builds at the Lego stores, and one of the only two guarantees in life, paying taxes. Let's get right off into the first question here. This one's from ID Liam. Ask Brick, what is a Lego ambassador? This question was asked on another episode of Ask Brick where I just talked about the Lego ambassador network and some of the things that I saw and you know, especially the Brixy situation that happened. And he wants to know what is the Lego ambassador network? What is a Lego ambassador? I feel like a majority of you watching this video already know what a Lego ambassador is, but it's essentially a person who has a you know, commercial relationship with the Lego group. They're often influencers or fan media or people who make content about Lego online who have that commercial relationship with the Lego group. And in return, they are given things like press releases early um, so they can make content on them. They are giving, you know, early brand assets, set images, things like that. They're also given free Lego sets to make content about. It's kind of a, it's an ambassador program. It's just exactly what ambassador means. It's they have that working relationship with the Lego group. So in exchange for those things like the early information or the press kits or the actual Lego sets, they in turn give Lego free publicity on their channels. It's kind of a win-win for ambassadors because they are getting that information early. You know, they're getting free Lego sets, but they're also getting content for their videos and they get to do it for free and like other reviewers things like that who'd have to go out and buy these products to make videos on them lego ambassadors do get them for free which helps get them the video out uh, so that's essentially in a nutshell what the lego ambassador is what a lego ambassador network is there's also the lego ambassador network for people who are in lugs which is a different kind of commercial relationship with the lego group so instead of getting free sets or media kits and things like that early their relationship is just a little bit more like community focused and i mean the lego ambassador network overall i'm not in the lego ambassador network so I'm not maybe not speaking to everything that it is but in terms of like what it is I believe it the whole thing is community focused the lugs side is very community focused because unlike the press and things like that the marketing that they need um, from the Lego influencers they're more just like this is the Lego brand and this is kind of our brand values versus on the ambassador side with like media it's definitely more of a marketing tool it's a ambassador program to get free press or to get prep not free because they're paying for it in some ways but it is to get press from these influencers. And of course, like I mentioned, in addition to the press, like the community aspect is a huge part of it. I don't want to glaze over that in my answer. Like I know that that's a huge part of it because in addition to getting the press kits and the free sets early so they can make content on it, which is obviously a big part, there's also the community aspect in terms of like, you know your audience. I know my audience. I know what my subscribers and my viewers are going to like. I know what they're not going to like. And as a Lego ambassador, it's easy for those ambassadors to take that feedback directly to the Lego group and be like, hey, this is what my community thinks. This is what they wish they could have had more of. This is what they want to see in the future. They really, really like this. Do more of this, like that kind of thing. So it's very, very important. It's kind of like a full, well-rounded program. From what I've heard, as I mentioned, I'm not in the program, but it seems pretty interesting. And this one actually wasn't as controversial as I thought it might be. I thought this question could have got a little bit spicier um, because there's definitely a lot of controversy over the Lego Ambassador Network, which is oh, I think is ridiculous. And I, I don't even want to get into that in the video because that's not what this user's asked here. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of controversy with the Lego. Lego Ambassador Network, which sucks. I don't think it's right, but in a nutshell, that is what the Lego Ambassador Network is. And although I'm not in it, I believe I've captured it correctly. But if anybody is in it and wants to correct me, let me know down in the comments below. These Lego Depot asked, asked Brick, do you ever think you can make an update on your secret service setup? I think it was over six years ago now, back in 2017, I made this video about the Lego secret service and basically the setup I had made for the secret service. And it was actually a product review of a Donald Trump, a President Donald Trump Lego minifigure that I got. So this was a really fun video to make. I was so scared scared when I made it because I'm not American. I was afraid it was going to be controversial. He was a very, very controversial president or like decisive, like literally half the country voted for him, half the country didn't. So I was definitely afraid to make that video. So I wanted to make the video because it was a cool product and I thought it would go well with my audience. So I made the secret service. I've always had the secret service before I even got that minifigure. I've always had those SUVs. I thought it was really interesting. So I decided to combine them all in one and that was really fun to do. And it's actually, it feels like just yesterday I was making that, that video. 
I thought it was in my old studio. I didn't realize that it was in my old, old Lego room. So this, that's how long ago this was, but it was really, really fun to do. I just regret that I don't have the high quality copy of this, to this video anymore. It's only on my YouTube channel. Uh, unfortunately, the hard drives from that time got lost and damaged, but uh, yeah, this was a really, really fun video to make. I absolutely loved making that like am an animation intro. It looked was really cool. So the question was, can you make an update on your secret service setup? I would love to. I Yeah, I think that would be a great idea, whether it be a long form video or a short form video. I think that would be really, really fun to do. So it'll definitely be something I will try and do in the near future. I feel like it's been a while since I've shown off something cool like that in my Lego room and my Lego collection and it's been six years so it's definitely changed since then. I've added some new vehicles and made some more modifications to it so yeah I would love to uh, show that off in the near future but in the meantime I hope you've enjoyed uh, this older video because it was certainly fun to make and bring back a lot of really good memories. The Brick Ninja 1170 asks, I live in a state without an Ikea so where can I buy the Billy bookcases? Um, so the Billy bookcases are these bookshelves I have here around my Lego room that store all of my Lego. They are amazing. I got them back in the day for only like $55 each, not the $90 price tag they are now, but I love them. They are I've never once been disappointed that I got these for my Lego collection. However, Brick Ninja, you don't live in a state with an IKEA. Um and the answer is, I don't think you can get these Billy bookcases anywhere else. I think they're, they're an Ikea product. I don't believe any other retailer sells them. Uh, I don't know it does, if Ikea maybe deliver to you, even if you don't have it in your state, like maybe they still ship it. I'm not too sure. Uh, but if they don't have it, I would just say your best bet would probably be to go to Walmart or any other furniture store and look for a similar bookcase. Like, I use Ikea because they work well. It's a pretty standard universal design and they were cheap back when I bought them, like very, very easy. I furnished the whole Lego room for less than a thousand dollars back when I first moved in 2019. So you could really find any alternative if you want. It doesn't have to just be Ikea, it can be literally whatever. I know there are so many other people out there who don't use Ikea, they use other brands and stuff like that. So whatever you find is totally up to you. As I said, I just use these ones because they were cheap and universal, but if there was another alternative at another retailer near you, you could definitely consider those as well or maybe make a road trip I know in the Canada like I it's hard for me to get to another province but in America like I've drove through three provinces just to get to Chicago so yeah you could maybe uh, do a little road trip someday but they're not the end-all be-all solution they're just a really good one and that's why I continue to use them I'm gonna butcher this name completely but or Shula asked Asbrick at the Lego store when you worked there did you ever allow adults to do the monthly mini builds this actually ties in perfectly to some claims that I saw online recently about adults actually Actually being denied building the free Star Wars build that happened just last week on May 4th. I don't even remember what the build is. I'll try and put a picture on the screen. But I heard, heard that some adults actually went to the store to try and do this build and they were told that it was for kids only. So the question was, do you allow adults to do the monthly model builds? And in my experience, the answer was no. So for starters, I actually never ran a monthly model build. There was actually people in the store like trained to do that better because they had worked with kids more. So I never got a chance to run one of those or even be present at the store when one ran. But I believe they were only for kids and I believe they were specified specifically that they were kids. I don't know if there was any instances where an adult came in, you know, and tried to build it as well. Like I think they were even said like no more than eight or 14 years old could build this or something like that. So I'm pretty sure it was very well known. However, they did actually have builds once in a while that adults could partake in because they recognize that Lego is a toy, but it is a building brick system for fans of all ages, not just kids. Although they do prioritize kids, you know, in the store with the play features and stuff like that, it is definitely possible for adults to do it too. So I know there was a few of them. I remember like, I think there was the Stranger Things ones that I believe adults were able to participate in. And I know there was a Star Wars one. Uh, I believe I worked there for that one as well. Um, that like, like, you know, adults could participate in. I've got a few of them here actually that were just left over from the store. And then anytime, of course, that there were leftovers and adults said like, hey, got anything behind the counter or anything like that, we were sometimes allowed to give them those builds if they were left over and we weren't going to use them for anything else. But for the most part, like those monthly builds were just for kids unless Lego specifically said they weren't. And I don't even believe Lego does them anymore, if I'm not mistaken. I think they probably got cut during COVID, if not before, which is kind of a shame because they were a really cool thing for kids to get, you know, get a free poly bag of Lego and they're probably buying other things while they're in there. I wish Lego would do something like that. 
Um, but there's also other opportunities for adults to get involved with Lego, like there's a fall nights or a fall mornings if you're in a lug, and I believe some Lego stores have even tested it out, like closing the store and having an a fall night where people could just come in and chill. I know Legoland does stuff like that. So there's definitely still options for adult fans of Legos to get involved. This next question was actually asked on a TikTok I made about tax season and me holding up a bunch of my receipts complaining about it. But this one is from a bunch of random letters. Ask Rick, do you have to pay taxes on the Lego you buy? So I actually made that video when it was time for me to pull receipts for tax season. And the short answer is no. Well, yes, I guess I do have to pay taxes on the Lego I buy because I have to pay sales tax here in Ontario, which is 13%. So any Lego set I buy, I pay the store an extra 13% to buy the set. But in terms of like income taxes on it, it's actually the opposite. No, I'm not paying taxes on my Lego. I'm actually using my Lego purchases and my other business expenses to reduce the income tax that I have to pay as a business owner. So because I'm a business owner, because I do influencing and because I sell Lego and all that stuff online and I make a profit from this, what I have to do is declare that as income to the Canadian Revenue Agency, the CRA. I send all the stuff to my accountant, but I also provide them with a list of any business expenses. So that's like any set I bought for the inventory for my Bricklink store. That's like any set that I bought to make videos on parts from Bricklink that I bought to make videos on like anything that I use for a commercial period that's not just buying like a thing of that's not buying a set and building it and never showing it on video like that's for my personal collection but anything I use for my YouTube channel or for my TikTok or Instagram anything that helps me generate revenue I do have to declare and I do have to send that to the CRA. So that's why I was going through the receipts because I was adding up how much Lego that I have purchased over the year for those different things, you know, whether for your Bricklink or for like set reviews or for build videos, like anything like that that involved a video that involved me earning some income from it, I had to tally it up and figure it out. So that's why I was pretty shocked when I was going through all those Lego receipts to see how much money I spent on Lego last year. Pretty crazy, but luckily I have a business and it helps with those expenses. But yeah, it was pretty wild. Hannah says, ask Brick, when are you coming back to the United Kingdom? Well, Hannah, I would love to come back to the United Kingdom sometime soon because I haven't actually visited the new Leicester Square Lego store. Last time I was there was in May 2022. So like basically two years ago now. And I haven't had it. I was there and they hadn't finished renovating the store yet. It was like half closed, half open and nothing was crazy special about it. It ended up opening up later that year, which was awesome. They added things like the minifigure factory, which Barry Francis was so kind to have sent me a custom minifigure factory for my minifigure collection because he saw my video where I said I was really disappointed that I didn't get to make one. But yeah, I'd love to come back to the UK sometime soon and visit the Lego store again. Hoping to go to Europe sometime later this year. Not sure where I'll go or like what cities or anything like that that I'll visit. Uh, but London's always a fun one to come back to. And if I get a chance to go, I definitely will. But currently right now, no more plans to visit the UK, but I will visit the continent at least sometime this year, probably. I'll answer one last question today because we're running out of time, but this one is from Ogilvy. Ask Brick, I was just wondering if you ever did giveaways with the sets that you haven't built. You guys would know by now, I do have a pretty full closet full of Lego sets that are unbuilt in my Lego collection. But for the most part, those ones are sets that I purchased from my personal collection. They're ones that I do want to build eventually. Uh, so no, unfortunately, I'm not going to be giving them away. I do do giveaways. <laughs> I said do do, but I do do giveaways every once in a while here on my channel or like on TikTok or Instagram and stuff like that. So you guys definitely want to follow and stay tuned because I'll probably do another one in the future. But anytime I do a giveaway, it's odds are it's a set that I purchased for the giveaway or it was a product that a brand has given me to give away. I'm not a terrible Lego hoarder in the sense that I just buy sets that I don't actually want. Like most of the sets in that closet are sets that I genuinely want and genuinely want to build. I just haven't had a chance to do so yet. So that's why they're not really being given away, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see what could happen. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe. Stay tuned because I've got lots more content coming soon to my channel and you guys are not going to want to miss it. Thanks again so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.